Well, my dust collector blower decided to blow itself up, so time to build a new one. First of all, a couple of things I learned from this impeller. The most obvious is MDF is not the right material for the fins. Also, for this diameter, the impeller height was too much. Because the taller the fins are, the more leverage will be on the bottom joint. Also, only having six fins for the impeller is not ideal for several reasons. One of them is every time I turn on the dust collector and let it run, that puts stress on all the joints. And if there were more fins, then this stress would be spread over more joints, so each individual one wouldn't have to hold as much. The second reason is noise performance, because six fins produce different frequencies than, for example, 12. I don't know this exactly, but the six fins kind of produce a lower frequency noise and also a certain type of vibration that at certain places in the shop were uncomfortable to listen to, even with ear protection. The 12 fins of my small dust collector produce a much more comfortable noise. It's still loud, but it's a more comfortable loud. But the biggest reason for the loud noise were the fact that the fins were too close to the blower wall. But the really good thing about this blower hosing was that it was strong enough to keep everything of the impeller inside when it blew up. And this was four millimeter plywood. But even though this design works, I probably won't use it again because the new impeller will be a little bit bigger, so I will rather use steel or aluminum for the blower wall this time. But the best and funniest thing I learned was that when I show a broken blower on YouTube, I get a few amazing comments. For example, Of course that you broken. It is completely wrong design. Oh, thank you. That was so helpful. Or I expected that to happen earlier. Make something so crucial from non-structural material wasn't brightest idea, sorry. Oh yeah, great, now I also know that. Funny thing though is, in the video where I built this one, everybody was like, oh cool, it works with cheap MDF, that's amazing. And now after it's broken, everybody is like, yeah, of course it couldn't work, it's just MDF, we all knew that. Yeah, of course. All right, now moving on to the new design. And this is what we're looking at. I worked several suggestions from people into it, so now the impeller size will be 45 centimeters in diameter and 85 millimeters between the discs. And the veins will be glued into stop grooves, so once they're glued together, they are really locked in there. First of all, I quick check if the motor still runs smoothly. Looks good. Fun fact, I made this mounting plate where the whole dust collector hang from from particle board. What the hell was wrong with me back then? I should be able to reuse this motor mount though, it's in good shape. Now let's check if the shaft or the bearings got any damage. Well, two hundredths of a millimeter. That's probably the dirt on the shaft. And the front is actually perfect. Now the bearings sound a little dry and it's tempting to replace them, especially after the punch from the impeller breaking, but I can't feel any roughness in the bearings. They are perfectly smooth still and honestly they also sounded like that when I got the motor. So I think they are still good. And for those of you who don't already know, this is a 3 horsepower motor that I got for 10 euros off of eBay. It runs on 3 phase power and yes, we have 3 phase power supply in the house. One of the challenges with making a blower this powerful is to make a mounting flange that can transfer this power to the impeller while still making it out of wood. With the original shaft key I was afraid that it would dig too much into the wood and maybe not work properly. So I made a bigger one, but unfortunately I made it out of brass. Because I had a scrap piece laying around that just had the perfect thickness But now after two years of use the fit is just horrible because the shaft digged into the brass It's just the wrong material. So now I made a new one out of this piece of steel angle It's still not the best material, but at least a fair bit better than brass mm, There's some play. The shaft has 22.0 Two, and the holes with the force of it have 22.3 and that's wow three tenths of play that's just way too much so then I cut this one with the CNC and it has 22.05 oh, and that's a much better fit it's perfect
I'll make my new mounting flange out of three layers and then it will be a fair bit bigger and thicker. And I can glue them together in place on the shaft. Hopefully I can get that off again. Okay, it's the next day and I need to get the flange off again to cut the slot for the keyway. Shit. Hopefully I can get that off again. Some tasks just require the right kind of persuasion. Uh, maybe it was the glue squeeze out. Well, I expected the discs once they're glued together to fit very tightly and that I maybe have to use the gear puller, but I didn't expect them to be that tight. So to not always have to use the gear puller, I took a small file filed the hole a little bit bigger and now the fit is really good. And I can still get it off by hand. I can mark the location for the key. I also need a way to secure the flange from moving in and out. And on my old flange I used a metal plate in the front and this got screwed into the shaft. And that worked perfectly, so I will use that method again. So now I set up an improvised tool rest to wire the motor back up, so now I'm ready to turn this round and true. Well, after this happened, I changed the setup a little bit so that I'm turning below the center. I'm also using only the scraper and not the bow gouge anymore because I'm just not comfortable enough with it on this. It went pretty uneventful after that. Okay, so the turning is done and turning the outside is just for aesthetic reasons. The important part is that this face here runs absolutely true and it took me a little bit, but now it does. I still have to remove a little bit more material, but I couldn't turn that away, so I have to do that by hand with the chisel. Center material is removed and now it sits flat. Okay, so now moving on to the impeller and the blower housing. I cut all the complex shapes with my CNC and used the same cutting method for all the parts, which was cutting two thirds of the way through, then removing the cutoffs with the bandsaw and finishing the shape with a flush trim bit on the router table. That saved time and was easier to set up on the CNC. Wow, this is much bigger than it looked like on the computer. And with this picture in front of me, I kind of see myself building a big disc center in the future. Now for the second disc, I struggled quite a bit about how thick to make it, because at this scale, I really have to take the laws of physics into more consideration. To be specific, Newton's first law. Now a very quick physics lesson about what Newton's first law is. It says that any object with mass stays in its current movement unless a force is applied to it. For example, this disc remains still or it remains spinning and it will remain spinning at the same speed unless you apply a force to it and you know it slows down because of air resistance and the friction of the motor bearings or if I stop it. So now let me tell you why I need to think about that when I'm building an impeller that size. The troublemaker here is my motor because it starts with so much force it will get the impeller to full speed within a split second. So from zero to about 3000 rpm within a split second at this scale and weight, there's a lot of force going on. So to handle these forces, the material and the construction of the impeller needs to be strong enough. Now for demonstration, I'll use my old impeller. Imagine we turn on the motor, so what happens? The lower disc will be accelerated rapidly by the motor via the flange. And the upper disc will also be accelerated, but that acceleration needs to be transferred over the veins to the top disc. And these joints of the veins need to be strong enough to hold up to that acceleration. And that's why I'm struggling about how thick to make the second disc. With the 6mm plywood, the deepest groove I can make is about 3-3.5mm three, three before I cut away too much and it gets too thin. 
and I don't think that this is strong enough. With the 12mm plywood I could make a 7-8mm deep groove for a much stronger joint, but the problem then is that the whole disc will have also double the weight. And accelerating double the weight again puts more stress on the joints, so I also had my concerns with that. So what I ended up doing was buying 9mm plywood, so I would have stronger joints than with the 6mm, and still less weight than with the 12mm. Wow, a lot of talking for telling you I'll use this thickness. But I not only like to tell you what I do, but also why I do. By the way, this conclusion is not based on calculations, but on knowing the theory of what is going on and gut instinct. Alright, so far so good. Now I can start making the new curved veins. The material, therefore, obviously won't be MDF. Thinking about stronger solutions, I thought about solid hardwood and bending or cutting it to shape. But the thing with solid wood is that it will shrink and expand. And if that happens, it may throw the impeller off balance and that just shouldn't happen. So, plywood. But bending plywood into this shape is just impossible. On my first impeller, I steam bedded and glued two layers of 4mm plywood together and it was really difficult and I just managed to get this curvature. So I don't really see me doing that again. Instead I cut a bunch of little pieces which I can glue to a big block and then cut all the curved shapes out of that with the bandsaw. I clamped the block to my workbench to keep the bottom relatively flat. While the glue was drying I sanded all the parts smooth. As the glue is not fully dried, I can attach the flange to the impeller disc and I do that by putting the flange on in reverse and the impeller disc now can locate the screw hole positions and after pre-drilling the holes, I can drive in the screws. Then I squared up that block, which in hindsight wasn't actually necessary. With the template glued on, I cut along the first curve. I had to use the blade for rough work to cut along the plywood, which worked excellent, but I also had to sand that rough surface smooth on the disc sander. And as I just put a new 60 grit sanding disc on there, that was really easy. For sanding the inner radius, I put my handheld drum sander in the lathe. Good fit. And then cutting them to final size. And besides for impeller, they are also great for other fun stuff. And like so, this idea could also be somewhat useful. Okay, back to the impeller. As you can see, the fins don't quite fit yet, but I did this on purpose. I have to cut a little notch out right here. amazing it actually fits I expected this to be more difficult to put together but seeing that it worked perfectly on the first try I think I even have enough time to use a wood glue instead of some kind of slow set epoxy what I expected. I can't change stuff anyways now but everything went relatively smoothly and should be in the right place. Now I just need to get rid of all the glue squeeze out. Okay this now seems very rigid and it's also quite heavy but unfortunately it doesn't run true. So now to cut it round again I'll use my bands or circle jig. And with a circle setup on the disc sander, I got the new surface smooth again. 
the hole in the middle is still off center and wobbles a little bit, but that's not really a problem. So now let's go on and make the blower housing. Whoops, uh, during editing I noticed that the video is getting quite long, longer than I thought it would be, because I recorded so much detail. Anyways, now I have to split this build up into several parts and the blower housing, you know, this little piece here, will be subject of the next video. And then you will also see if the blower actually works or not. Well, at least it already can spin at a low RPM up there. The second reason is noise performance, because six fins produce different frequencies. Frequencies. And the front... Oh. So then I cut this one with the CNC and it has 22.08. Oh fuck! <laughs> And if there were more fins, then the stress would be spread. Blech. Clamps that don't work. I hate them. To cut the slot for the keyway. Oh. Uh. uh oh. Ah oh, yes. <laughs> the screw is smaller than the shaft. Now I can mark the location for the key. I don't drop it. 